Here in America, we have got breaking news. Apparently, Donald Trump, uh, this is according to the Washington Post, is going to announce a deal to end the shutdown. That deal would uh, fund government to continue for at least some period and put off consideration of wall funding until a later date. That is a deal technically. It sounds to me like just funding government and not you know, engaging in this nonsense tangent that has nothing to do with the actual funding of government. But look, if that means that we no longer, if we don't have to iterate to uh, day 36, if that means 800,000 federal workers uh, will actually be paid, then that is great news. Um, I will only briefly say, haha, you loser, Donald Trump, you got beat. The important thing is that we resolve the shutdown, assuming that's actually what he does. And this is not some sort of dodge so that when he goes in the Rose Garden and announces it, it's national emergency and I'm king for life stuff. Uh, but we'll have to see. While that is going on, meanwhile in. Meanwhile, in Australia, bats are dying all over the place. Uh, so last week, researchers from Western Sydney University finalized their conclusion that about 23,000 speckled, spe spectacled, spectacled <laughs> flying foxes, how did they get the spectacles on them? Died in an event uh, of heat and uh, you know, bad weather on November 26th and 27th. That is a very short period of time to lose 23,000 of those bats. They often experience fatal heat stress when temperatures eclipse 42 degrees Celsius, scientists say. During November's heat wave, uh, one area recorded its highest ever temperature of 42.6 degrees Celsius. And so, look, the reason we talk about this is not because I have some sort of vested interest in bespectacled flying foxes, but that this is one little thing happening in one little area of the world that gives you an idea of how bad this is. And much of the lessons that you can learn from these bats can be applied over gigantic areas of the Earth's surface. This is the sort of thing that we should expect that at the same time that like hundreds of thousands of reindeer are dying in the Arctic because the, um, the, the tundra is melting and anthrax is being released and all that. That's a little thing that you don't pay attention to. There's a little thing with bats in Australia. These sorts of things start to add up when you have climate change across the entirety of the Earth's surface. So very unfortunate, both for the bats and for the Earth. And meanwhile in. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile in Florida, Ron DeSantis' new Secretary of State is now his old Secretary of State because he was forced to resign after photos emerged of him. Well, let, let's take a look. That is uh, Mike Ertel who once was Secretary of State, uh, he's in blackface and he's wearing a New Orleans Saints bandana wrapped around his head. He's got big earrings on and although you can't see it in that photo, apparently in some of the other photos, his shirt says Katrina victim. Now, if these photos were from last Wednesday, this is unfortunate. But it's actually worse than that because these are not from last Wednesday. These are from two months after Hurricane Katrina, meaning, meaning that just 60 days after 1,800 Americans died, he thought those people are funny. Their life experience is a laugh riot. That's my Halloween costume for this year. So I would say too soon now, definitely too soon, two months after Hurricane Katrina. Um, and. Uh, in response to this, this is the stepping down, Ron DeSantis said, it's really unfortunate because he's done great work. Odd that Ron DeSantis doesn't have a problem with the insane racism implicit in that costume. Weird how that works out. And meanwhile, Lynn. This is an unfortunate one. Meanwhile, in Brazil, an openly gay congressman has left his job over pervasive death threats that have come about as a result of him openly clashing with Brazil's new fascist anti-gay president, Jair Bolsonaro. In an interview published by a daily newspaper, Congressman Gene Willis said he was currently outside of Brazil and had no plans to return. Instead, he said he would work in academia, but did not actually say where. He said his decision to leave wasn't just because of Bolsonaro's rise, but rather the climate of heated rhetoric and intensifying violence towards members of the LGBT community in the wake of last year's campaigns. So this, just within the context of this story, having to do with Brazil, this is a tragedy that in Brazil, which is, that is a major country that you would not only step down from being an elected official, but you would flee your country over threats against you. But also stepping just a little bit wider, 
How many times on this show did we talk about Bolsonaro and what he would represent for Brazil? Not just that he himself is anti-gay, not just that in Brazil there are people who care so little about that community that they would vote for someone like Bolsonaro, but that they are both made worse when you give one political power and you give another political cover. That you get someone like Bolsonaro in office and then other people start to feel like, Hey, maybe this position I have, this hatred I feel in my heart, not so bad. Maybe I should actually act in it and maybe I should threaten some elected officials. You think Bolsonaro really cares about that? Probably not, but we should because I see this sort of thing happening in the US as well. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.